chapter, verses 10 to 31. Proverbs in the 31st chapter, verses 10 through 31. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength. And strengthens her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle. And her hands hold a distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all of her household is clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue she is a law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and her own works praiseth her in the gates. Let us pray. Our precious and heavenly Father, We thank you, Lord, as we are gathered together here today to sing praises unto you and to be thankful for the things that you bestow upon us and how you honor us, Lord, by being faithful unto us. Today is a day, of course, that we have set aside to honor those mothers or those ladies that meant something special within our lives. And, Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them that are here today. And we ask your blessings upon them in a special way and give them honor as they have honored you. We thank you, Lord, that we do have mothers and that you have designed it that way, Lord, and we thank you for that, for the way they guide and direct our lives and what they mean mean to us. We ask that you be with our services today, Lord, and the blessing on the reading of the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, once, once again, time after time, God pours out and gives to us special blessings. And one of those blessings that God gives to us, which is very unique, is is a mother. A mother is special in many different ways. And to each and every one of us, our mothers mean something different to us. Uniqueness in a special way. A special way that our mothers may touch each and every one of us differently. But God has designed perfectly their lives. Everything that God designs is perfect. In all aspects, the mother is perfect in all ways. A mother was designed to be a person of many talents. Someone that that had lots of patience. Someone who had a tender heart. Someone who could be stern. In occasion and also lovable. A mother who possesses these certain qualities as scripture spells out. Certainly is a blessing from God. For the things that she has within her. Many of us today, we, the our world, world paints many different pictures of how a mother should be. In all perfectness, everything is perfect. But actually, in reality, this only exists in storybooks, books, and fictions. Because life is not perfect, nor either is anyone else in it. Life throws many curveballs. Some are hit out of the ballpark, and others are missed horribly and are miserably. But mothers were created by God to be able to pick up those broken pieces 
to go through those storms of life and to help, help her, her children, to be the one who was there ready to give a, a tender heart, to pick up those broken pieces and to mend them back together with just the love that has been instilled with her from, by God, to give that kiss or that soft-spoken word, and sometimes even with words of harshness to get the point across. God has designed a mother with uniqueness. You know, most mothers live a hard life. Many people fail to recognize that, and especially on Mother's Day, they come and they they give honor to their mothers, but yet remember that a mother does live a hard life with, with little thanks given to her. Mothers face reality as often problems, mistakes, broken hearts, broken dreams, and the true realistic mother needs forgiveness and grace for her for the things that she faces each and every day. You know, you don't have to look very fine to find a perfect example or, or, or a description of a perfect mother by reading the scriptures that we've read here this morning in Proverbs chapter 31. Do you know what made her such a valuable wife in scripture? She earned her husband's respect by working with him instead of against him. What an example to follow as husbands and wives, moms and dads, work together as a team and not against one another as opponents. God designed it that, that the family should be united together and to work together by God's design. Together as one, we are the same team, and you have the same goals to build and provide for and to maintain a godly family. You know, this is something that God wanted to be instilled, something he has instilled into a family organization together. As we look at the things of this world and the things that, that we seem to be heading towards as a nation and as a world, the family is, is beginning to break apart, so to speak, by worldly ideas and tradition. But it is still a design by God and is, is something that must, must continue on. This woman in this description, she works hard at home. She works with her hands, as do most mothers. Little gratification that they receive, but they work, they work hard at home. They say that a mother's work is never done. And for those who are mothers, you would probably agree with that. That a mother's work is never done. There's always something to do. Clothes to be washed, dishes to be done, floors to be swept, tears to be wiped away. A mother plays many different roles in life. Do you know one of the most demanding jobs in, in life is being a mother? And also a wife. So much demand and, and things are needed. A mother has to be a nurse, a teacher, a child psychologist, a dietitian, a housekeeper, a cook. And it takes hard work to do all these things, to build and prepare and to keep a home that, that, that is necessary. But also, you know, it also takes a husband also to be there with her, to lend a helping hand. To give her a hand, and not just a helping hand, but a hand that is worthy to be praised of. Something that is actually not just something to do, but something there to support her for the, for the task that she has to do. And that is something that needs to be done. You know, the cycle of life is complete circle when all things are in common in life. God designed it that way. That all as a family of God would work together to achieve the goal that God has intended we learn through those processes of life how respect and honor is due to our mothers for the things that they do for each and every one of us. For our mothers, for each and every one of us, like I said, means something special to us. They each touch us in a different way, the way God has intended. And not all mothers are created the same. If you read the last four verses in Proverbs, it speaks volumes how we need to honor and to praise the ladies of our lives. The Bible tells us that a godly woman deserves to be praised. When the Bible tells us that a woman deserves to be praised, it must be true. Because God would intend it for it to be that way. That we would praise and to give them honor. Husbands, teenagers, and children. You know, so many times do we understand that do you know that we, we ought to praise godly women in our lives. In other words, our mothers. We need to praise them. To give them credit where credit is due for the things that they do because they deserve it. In verse 11 says, the heart of her husband trusts in her. I wonder how many of you praise your wife or your moms today. How often do you praise 
your wife or, or the, maybe your mother for the things that she has done to you or honor them because you find in her something that you, something that you can trust. In fact, not only can you trust mom to get something done, but she always has a way of doing it before you ever think. Have you ever had a mother or a wife that's ever done something before, you, before you've ever realized you really needed to have that done? Or she's already taken care of that. That is called love. Love that God has instilled in these ladies. Moms have a, have a sixth sense. How, how many times have you said, honey or mom, can you? And she just waits for you to finish and said, I've already taken care of that. I've already done that. I was way ahead of you. This is just one or more of the special blessings given us to us, designed by God, to help us along. Because it's not for our moms, where would each of us be today? Where would we be today if it wasn't for the mothers in our lives? How they watch over us and they, they take care of us. And sometimes they put up with, with crazy ideas and notions and wild dreams that we have. But yet they still love us and, and hold us close to them. And nudge us along. And prepare us for life. And to continue to stand behind us and love us no matter what we do in life. Men, sons, and daughters. When was the last time you thanked your wife? Or your mother because she sewed a button on your shirt. Or mended a tore pair of pants. Or cooked you dinner. Or earned some additional income for your home. When was the last time you truly gave her thanks and honor? Many people find that they find that they wait till Mother's Day to give them thanks and honor. And they think if they just take them out to dinner or buy them flowers or whatever it may be. That that, that is all that is needed. But... Often and daily we should thank them for the things that they do for us because they do live a hard life with little gratification given to them. Or how about left you a note in your lunchbox? How many times have you ever had your mom or even your wife leave you a note in your lunchbox to give you encouragement or left you a note anywhere to give you encouragement and lift up your day? We are to honor them. Ladies and mothers, where are that are here today, I have a question for you. Do you live a godly life? Do you live a life that is pleasing to God? And I'm not just talking about knowing God. I'm not just talking about knowing the stories of, in the Bible, but I'm talking living a life that is pleasing to God. Living a life that is worthy to be praised. Living a life that would be honorable and to God. That is a question. It is, a, it, is, is a, is a unique, it is a blessing to be called a mother, if you're, if you're a mother here today, or, or a lady, because that is something that God honors. But God honors even more if you live a godly life, one that is pleasing to Him, one that, that without a doubt, people would know that the, thing, the blessings that you have come from God. Do you, in other words, do you carry those traits of God within you? Are you living a life that would be pleasing to him? Do you, do you read, have a daily devotion? Do you regularly pray to God and ask God to guide and direct your life? Is God living within you? Today we need more Christian mothers like never before. Women of faith. Not only to be strong mothers, but also to be strong in their faith for God. Thomas Jefferson once said, I do not have my mother long, but she cast over me an influence which has lasted all my life. The good effects of her every, train, every training I can never lose. If it had never been for her appreciation and her faith in me in a critical time in my experience, I should never likely have become an inventor. I was always a careless boy, and with a mother of different mental caliber, I should have turned out badly. But her firmness, her sweetness, her goodness were per potent powers to keep me in the right path. My mother was the making of me. The memories of her will always be a blessing to me. And I would say many of us would have the same things with them that we could say about our own mothers. Maybe in a different way, but our, our mothers are what molds us and makes us and guides us and encourages us. It heads us down the path of life. And after, after pondering upon that, you know, mothers, you have a great responsibility. 
not only of all the things that you have to take care of, like there isn't, isn't much you have to do, of all the, of, of being, taking care of their home and, and your family, but also making sure that you live a godly life and that you direct and you guide your children in the paths that they should go. By the example, by reading God's word and telling your children and about the word of God and where they, should, where they should place their cares. A blessing from God comes to those who honor him. If we honor God, God will honor us in many different ways. And I believe that's important. That we honor God with our lives. And I believe it's important that mothers honor, their, honor God with their lives that they live. The Bible tells us one of the Ten Commandments to honor thy father and thy mother, that your days may be long. And it's important today that we do honor our mothers. Whether or not our mothers are still with us here on this earth or they have gone on to be in heaven, we still must honor them, no matter what, with our lives and our each, every, everyday lives that we do each and every day. We know right from wrong. But I do believe that the most honor that we can give to our mothers is living a life that is pleasing to God, doing the things that she has taught us to do in life, being a good example. Today is a day that we do set aside to honor our mothers. Let us give them honor the way, the way that they so deserve. Let us praise our mothers. Tell them that you love them, if that's possible. Put your arms around them, hold them. Tell them what they have meant to you. But not only today, for the rest of your life, every chance you get, tell them how special they are to you. And by doing this, we honor our Heavenly Father by honoring the mothers within our lives. I want to wish each mother here a happy Mother's Day. And not just in words, but, all, but for, with a sincere heart. For you were designed by God in a special way. Your job is not easy. Your tasks are not light. But you will be rewarded someday for, your, for the things you have done if you live, live your life according to the way God wants you to. God will honor you someday for your faithfulness. And we thank you for each and every mother that is here today. And each and every lady that is here today. We thank you. And we honor you today. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, once again for the, the ladies within our lives. For what they mean to us. For the special gifts you have given to each and every one of us. As you have given us blessings and riches and rewards which we cannot even imagine. So many times we have those blessings in front of us, Lord, and we don't even realize that they are true blessings until it's too late. Lord, I pray that our eyes are open for the gifts you have given to us and that are in front of us. And we thank you for those gifts, Lord, in the form of a mother or a lady, a special lady that's in our life. And how they mold us and make us and how they, how they impression us, Lord, our lives. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray your blessings upon and bless each person that's here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.